Hello everybody and welcome to this video. You join me in the studio of things. So in this one we are going to cover the Fiat Coupe and if you want to see more of this and you want to see more of the Fiat Coupe let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Now this one's going to be a bit sort of abridged because we had there's a lot of stuff going on at the time and I was sort of putting the car back together and putting myself back together at the same time which is a bit weird. So that's what I was doing. So you'll see a few clips um, and stuff and we'll just get right into it. So this is getting the Fiat Coupe that's been off the road for about three years back onto the road. So of course, one of the main problems has always been this door, but I fixed it. So there's a set of little levers in there. All it needed was reconnecting and I got these universal um, door thing in the bobs. These, and I use those. Um, pretty easy one. The only issue you've got with this is the, um, unlike on a, well, in fact, it does happen on a lot of doors, but the actual mechanism, the little latch is up there. So it's all the way up here. Then obviously you've got the world's weirdest door handles, which are so hard to take off. I also did a bit of rust pre prevention work on there. I know it doesn't look very pretty, but it's going to be covered anyway and sanded down. And um, there was a lot of rust um, bubbles and stuff. Especially in places like this. God damn it, don't know how all this stuff got in there. But I've managed to sort that out. If I were you and if you own one of these, I would be taking them off and having a look. Um, because they're not, funnily enough, they're not very, very well sealed. I mean, this has got a seal here, but this one's failed. So obviously if you think the water's coming in and then you end up with um, loads of water just sitting there. And then obviously rusting it out and you don't want that so yeah um other than that there's a there's this problem as you can tell i've got a bit of a cold at the minute there's this which is has been a staple of this car for ages i'm not sure i want to fix it but you know i might do the thing is with the bonnets on these i'm just going to put you down actually so you can see there you go i might cut that bit out Issue that you've got is the bonnet on this is the whole front of the car essentially. So lift it up. I know that's a bit close, but who cares? There you go. Ooh. Mine's got the weird one where you press this. I'll show you that. It's got the weird one and you press that in. So engine wise, I've done a service and we'll cut to that in a second. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's not really much else to do. Um, in this video, we're going to be primarily focusing on this bit. And then obviously you'll see that service as well, if I can get any footage of it. But it's going to be sorting this out because many a year ago, I did this with some, um, what you call it, Plasti Dip and all that stuff. And I want to get it all off, um, sand it all down and make it all nice again. Um, is there anything else really in here? No, I mean, look at that. Still going strong after all these years. Um, I'm going to do a bit of rust prevention work and straighten these um, Eiffel Towers out. I'm just going to genuinely clean all this area up um, and have a look at a few things like the air filter and things like that. So let's get to it. So a bit of a closer look, you can see how not good things are looking. It's a mixture of peeling old paint and um, plastic dip, as you can see by its somewhat elasticity there. <laughs> um, so... I'm going to take this off first and then take the grill off and then I'm hoping it shouldn't be too difficult. If we can do it in situ, we will do because I hate taking this car to pieces. It is a nightmare. And um, we're going to spruce up the battery um, bay as well. And we're going to spruce up each side corner of the car and make sure it's all okay. And I'll cut to that now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this one. As promised, it's a video on this thing here and my absolutely terrible garage. Now, I did some of this stuff back in summer, so there's going to be a bit of that included as well. So in this video, I don't have any cheesecake on my face, do I now? In this video, I just bought a, I managed to get a cheesecake marked down because I hid it the previous day because I knew it was going out of date. But anyway, two, two pounds down from a five is pretty good. Right, so on the actual video, in this video, we're going to be sorting this out. Um, if you're not subscribed already, please make sure to do so. It helps me out and you get to see more of this stuff and more of my other cars. Um, in this one, we're going to be sorting out this door that doesn't open and close. 
a bit of rust on there and we're also going to be taking a brief look at what else we need to do we're also going to be um looking at the for all four corners and just tidying them up and checking to see what the issue is with that side there and we're going to be looking at something rather rather sad which is definitely going to be fixed because this is like my um it's like my car wife so without further delay let's get into it okay so first things first i'm going to cut back to me from the past so you'll see that now and we will sort out the um well that was a bit stupid and um, we'll sort out the whole um corner thing and we'll do our initial inspection so 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 issue i thought it wasn't that bad hence you can see the little bit of body filler i put up there but hold on can you hear that can you see that yeah that ain't good at all so we have a legendary holy floor or do we? Uh, see, people say the more you prod, the more worse it gets. I prefer it. I prefer to know what I'm dealing with. But that is a bit of a disaster. It's a bit of a mess. But yeah, that's rotten as out. Previous owner did a bit of this as well. From what I know, the guy before that there was also a bit of work that I had done to get through an MOT which I think is under here that I've sanded back that's a bit of a disaster isn't it it's a bit of a mess oh well it is what it is son what? that's not as bad as I thought because that is still solid Oh no, <laughs> it's a disaster. This is a Fiat thing. It's an old car thing, so don't go slagging it off. All old Fiats and all old cars do this. It's just how you treat them. But that, that feels relatively solid, to be honest with you, but I want that all cutting out because I'm very, very, very worried that that's just going to continuously get worse. Of course, you've got a bit under here. Now, because it's been sat so long, and my old garage wasn't watertight like this one, so it's a bit of a mess, sadly. See, that all that floor, so... I'm going to have to get someone to come and weld me a new floor in. Because I don't want that. And that's obviously all underneath my driver's seat, so... That's probably gonna, well, it'll f anything with a hole in it is definitely gonna fail an MAT. Is that going, oh my God. That's gone straight through. Let's show you that. Oh, damn, that's, that's terrible. Oh, well, I'm really not that bothered because at the end of the day, with this car, right, it's worth the money. So, uh, Oh, Rockbox Fiat strikes again. <laughs> See some of the wiring loom up there. Oh no, Rockbox Fiat strikes again. God damn it. Oh well, this is a project for me to get on the road for summer. I definitely want this sucker back on the road for then. So I'm going to have a talk with some local welders. Um, I'm not going to do it myself, I don't think, but we'll see. I'll talk with some local welders and we'll go from there. However, I'm quite pleased that she's lasted this long. If I get all this section here cut out and get a new floor off someone, I'll be happy with that. Of course, the back as well needs a bit of doing. But not too bad, not too horrible. It's how we had some welding in a time. Little bit, tiny tickle under this side as well. So that's fine with me. I think I'm going to get that bit redone. It's the bit underneath that filler that is. But So they must have just slightly plated it over. I'm not 100%, but here we are. So the next thing... Well, what is next? I'm not exactly demoralised by that. Oh, I tried to paint this and it's gone disaster. So I think I'm just going to have to take that off. Um, another thing is, as well, is we serviced it. So that's brilliant. She, def she definitely needed an oil service. You can see as well the brake reservoir. You see the fluid in there is far gone. That also needs sorting out as well. So we have a definite few jobs to do on this car, but not anything horrific. I think the main thing obviously is, well, next, I'm gonna take this entire interior out. How do I do that today? Um, 
you know, let's see what we can do. Yes, this interior needs to come out. Next seat out. Um, I didn't film me doing it, but because it's a mess. <laughs> um, and it was so hard to get that one out. What I learned last year was to take your time and not rush everything. Yeah, I might only get two seats out, etc. in this amount of time, but I really don't care. It's about doing it properly. But yeah, maximum downforce, like a wing on a Bugatti Veyron. Um, and we, we managed to get that out. So next thing's next with these, make sure you take this wire out and then you should be good to go to take your seats out. I've never ever taken this out and um, there's no tutorials of it anywhere. So I believe it's just these two and then it pulls forward. Well, let's see. Just to mention, these are two 10 mil bolts that look like that. So let's, hopefully this time when I get this out, I can properly refurbish it as well. So I'm going to be redoing everything besides this center console here because it actually looks really well. Yeah, the center console. Yeah, I'm going to be doing everything besides that because that, um, I, I think me and Katie pulled that off pretty well. There you go. I think it was as simple as I thought it was. So I think you've got to take the handbrake off there. I'm always so concerned about the car moving. Now, hold on. Surely it would make more sense if I did it like that. Yeah, there's a the handbrake compensator, I think. There. There's all the handbrake stuff, the wire into it. There we go. Okay. Okay, I've never been in here. That's cool. So, we've got that connector there for the... Um, watch my who's it, my bob. And the... The uh, uh, thing for the things at the side, <laughs> the mirrors. And then um, I think we should be home free after that. Yeah, looks like it. Cool, so I'll remove that pesky little connector. Oh, it's just a little push one, actually. Yay. Oh, no. I forgot. The handbrake has a gator on it. I've got to somehow remove that. Oh, wait, you... With this, it's like a leather bag. You can do that little clip there, do all that, and then pull it up. Yeah, I remember that. I've done that before. It's not the rest of it. Cool. So here we are. We're a little bit close to the carpet freedom. I don't think the carpet goes under this too far. No, it don't. Yeah, no. Um, yeah. Well, I think we're going to have to take these seatbelt anchorage points off, and then hopefully we should be a bit closer to seeing what is underneath this dreadful mess it really needs a clean you remember that last video i'll put a clip on the screen if i can me cleaning this and sorting this all out when it was last on the road it was absolutely fantastic this obviously needs a refurb now you see on these cars it usually goes very bad around there and then just gets really really gunked up i'll be showing you how to do that but i will remove it for now and put it in here and we will continue Okay, so now that's off, that off, you've got a little Phillips head screwdriver, Phillips head screw here. I'm doing it with a flat head because I'm a chaotic person. Don't try this at home, kids, or adults or anybody. I'm a trained, I'm a trained professional. Um, oh my God, come on, man. It's a little self tapper, I think, as well. I'm not even filming it. Come on, get out. There's a good boy. This seat belt is always messed with me, by the way. So when I was when I used to drive this car all the time, this seat belt would always get jammed. It's not now, right? But it would always jam. And then you would be stuck with a seat belt that would only reach this far. It would just annoy the hell out of you. So I'd have to sit there like on a journey, just <laughs> like uh, attempting to get it to unstick itself. I always did like, but you used to have to um there's a reason why that snaps slightly, and it's because of oh, the amount of times I had to use to. I used to just have to um, pull the um, pull that back off of its little plastic snappy things and stick my hand down the side and just cut myself all over with all the little bits in there. Oh, so annoying. So I'm hoping that after this, that makes things a little bit easier. So the next part of this strip down is remove these two here. Oh, what's this? Oh yeah, it's that plate fix. <laughs> Remove these two here and then I can get this bottom bench off. I might have to take the whole lot to pieces, but let's see. We are a lot further, so we've just got this to take out and this to take out. So there's two little Phillips head screws down there. Note there. Weirdness. Put them there. 
So I don't have that much left. I'm hoping in this video we can peel the carpet up and see what's wrong. And then we can go from there and then you guys can take the piss out of me in the comments. <laughs> or um, make some great suggestions, which you always usually do. So we'll um, we'll we'll get cracking. I think this is the, probably going to be the first to come off. So yeah, we'll do that. It's not as simple as I thought. I thought I would have to, I would get to avoid taking the whole of the back bench to pieces, but I guess not. There's two more Phillips head screws under there. And then this whole thing should just pop straight off. Plus you've got your one-two parcel shelf as well. Oh, what would you even call that? Yeah, note these screws. Interesting. So let's see if we can get this sucker off. So these are going to be staying off as well because I need to. Oh bloody hell! I need to change these speakers. See down there, they weren't too bad. I'm very glad I caught that. As you can see there, the common problem with these. This is where the Pininfarina badge is on the outside. That is just surface, thank God. And so is this down here. But basically, what happens is, is obviously you can see where the tide marks are on there. Don't know why my light just turned off. These these let water in. And then obviously it sits at the bottom of there and does what you've just seen. However, on a lot of these cars, it's a lot, a lot worse. Um, and you end up with a giant hole in there, or you end up with the bubbling at the bottom of here, which is what my green car had. So I'm very lucky I got that that close to that. Of course, you can see here our carpet is nearly up. Yeah, we can take this one up basically on this side. But we need to obviously take the other side off. Under this side, I ain't too worried. No, it's all gravy under that bit anyway. But yeah, we'll be taking this off and then we'll take the other side off. We also need to inspect that in there. My biggest worry is, is this is what we could see and obviously that runs down there and along and under here. So I'm worried about where that hole might be, but we'll see. Worst comes to worst, um, I pay money to fix it. Best comes to best. I don't pay money and it it, does, it gets fixed anyway. So let's see what we can do. So how we're looking this side, we've got a massive piece of foam, which is concerning. Okay, that's quite bad. Is it gone through though? Nope. Okay, so we can, we can salvage that. We can salvage that, thank God. But we're getting very lucky that we've caught all this because if we keep, if we'd have let that go, we'd have been into a lot more work. That is very rotten though, Jesus Christ. But it's still solid, it's just a lot of shite. Let's have a look down here. Yeah, that's fine. It hasn't gone through at all, so. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so if you can't see it from the outside, guys, it's happening on the inside. These need to be resealed because you can see the tide marks get in there, the water sits, and then you end up with, um, Something that looks like the bottom of an oven that's never been cleaned. So I'm very lucky that I caught this now. Could have caught it later. I know that looks bad on camera, but trust me, it ain't going through. So that's the biggest thing. I'm going to clean that up in the next video. But now we have all this off. Moment of truth. I'm going to peel this sucker back and see what is happening under here. I need to remove all this stuff. Rover keys. So it wouldn't be a Tom, a Tom Drive video without a mention of a Rover in New videos on the 75 are coming soon, by the way. Um, so we'll peel all this sucker up. Well, I'll get to the point. I'll clean it up because I don't think you really want to watch see me clean. But thank God we saw that. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll clean this up a bit and then we'll go from there. So the next bit we'll be doing um, is these bits. Now, as you can see by those streak marks, there's like a little pinhole there where the pin and farina badge goes in. You can see I can move that with my finger. So basically what happens is it rains, it comes down the car, gets trapped in between there and goes in here and takes dirt in with it. So obviously what's then happened is the water has sat and has caused all of this, which is thankfully surface rust, so I believe. I've already treated this one edge and done that. Apologies, it's a bit of a mess, but whatever works. Um, so now it's time to do that. So let's get the wire wheel on it. This trusty old thing that has literally nothing left. And let's get that sucker all cleaned up. Hello everybody, welcome to this video. In this one, we are gonna start to put some sound deadening in. We're gonna take some more of the carpets up as well. Those two bits that I showed you at the back, we're gonna sort them out 
and start covering them up. And the main one that we're going to do is take this bloody radiator out because, as you'll see, it's <laughs> it's been quite a task. But let me know what you think about what we're doing with this and any suggestions, any tips, if you're a fe fellow coupe owner, let me know. Make sure to subscribe so you can see more of this. And, yeah, let's get on with this video and we'll get on with sticking this thing back on the road new project videos every thursday and yes that's going to happen now because i'm a little less busy and also new uh, new talking videos every tuesday so let's get into it first thing i wanted to show you is this now can anyone tell me the vintage of this if anyone's italian and watches this i think this is italian but i found this underneath there <laughs> which is very interesting so yeah we'll um we'll move on but I found lots of things underneath this car, underneath the carpets in this car, and that is one of the more interesting ones. So here's our dead mat pro that we're going to be sorting out. Um, just sound deadening because obviously the ones in there, they're sort of perished a bit, and I'd prefer it to be a bit quieter. I think you get 10 sheets in each one. Sounds pretty cool. Um, or doesn't sound pretty cool because it's dead quiet. But yeah, we're gonna put that in now. We're gonna see if we can, if there is no surprises. I said if there was no surprises, we take it back and then we discover this hole. So basically what's happened is, is you see these, Fiat essentially punched these into a hole in the floor to keep them down. Well, they didn't do it on that side. On that side, it's held in with tape. So they punched this into the floor and obviously as time has gone on, it's ungrommeted as well or unsealed. Obviously, there's been a lot of water, you know, in its 20-odd years of existence, and it's um, formed a hole. So, I'm not leaving that. That's really annoying. So, I'm going to have to get a welder on that, which will be coming in the next, I think it's the video after this one. So, stay tuned for that, fixing the floor in the theatre. After removing all of the sound deadening, I found the swamp which was causing all of the awful issues inside of the car. So I removed all of that sound deadening, as you can see, and then put some new dead mat Pro in there. But of course, there was that massive hole, so we needed to get that sorted. So we grinded that one back with the help of Paul from Lowered Dog Customs, cut it out, saw the extent of the damage wasn't too bad, and then welded in a new piece in. But you can see there all of that awful rust that we've cut out. New patch in there and all grinded down, more or less a very functional repair and it worked a damn treat because that is a good bit of rock cut out. And there is the final dead mat put in there on that side. I um, had both sides welded but I didn't cover that in the pictures. Now we move on to the suspension. So I got some new springs and some new shocks, got them all painted up. And then we installed them on the car with some new top mounts as well. There's a picture of the old suspension with that broken spring. And you can see there I've fitted those, um, those shocks on the top mounts. And I'm just testing to make sure because I accidentally pulled one of the drive shafts out and lost a load of gearbox oil. So <laughs> I was absolutely cacking myself at that. But the blue and red colour scheme looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that, and it looks a damn sight cleaner than it did before. This is the first time I've ever taken struts off and springs off, and the first time I've ever used spring compressors as well, which is pretty... I'm pretty glad I didn't die. But there you go. There it is all installed there. Um, word of warning, don't sit there and drape your, um, what you call it, down like I did, your um, brake hoses, because you could end up splitting them. And there we are, front wheels down on the car. So now we move on to the back end of it. And you can see those trailing arms and everything are looking in a pretty poor state. Once I took the wheel arch liner off, you could see part of my Toblerone looking rear um, rear wheel tub at all decided to come off. So we cut that off and welded a new piece on, which looks absolutely great. Second side, more of the same. Got that cut out and then welded some new pieces on, as you can see there. And that's I didn't take a picture after grinding it, which is annoying. So... One of the things I've found is the decreased brake efficiency on the left-hand side on that um, brake caliper. 
So what I did is I tested it with this video and you can see no movement from the piston. So we moved on to process of elimination, moving back through the system and moving on to find that the brake hose was the cause of the issues. Obviously, as you can see, I've had to cut this off. This was sort of our last thing that's kind of been annoying me. My worry was always the caliper was seized, but if you look at that, it could still be seized, but I don't think there's any brake fluid getting through this. Um, or that, <laughs> mind you. So, yeah, not looking particularly great. Basically, the rubber's perished and broke down, which is always fantastic. See, that spins freely, so I'm not too bothered about that. It's just getting this off of here, which is going to be a bit of a pain in the ass, but we'll we'll try our best and we'll see how it goes. Next thing's next, we put her all back together and rolled her out of the garage for the first time in about three years. So here we are, the first MOT, the one to the one to be, the one that we needed it to pass on, and it failed spectacularly. Now, if you look at the list, I'm afraid a lot of this is my fault. The brake clips, you probably saw them in a previous clip. I did them completely wrong. The struts, I um, did that completely wrong. And a few other things. The MOT tester was incredibly picky. So we, trying to get this thing to retro rides, Phil and Mel came out in the middle of the middle of the evening and worked until the small hours of the morning when the milkman came and we said good morning and then went for round two. Right, so it's the morning before his second attempt at the MOT. Obviously, it failed the first time spectacularly, kind of down to my own fault. But this time, she ain't going to fail. We've obviously replaced the CV boot and that in there. Big shout out to Mel and Phil. I can't, I know you can't probably can't see it, but I am absolutely smashed. There we go. We did the track rod end on that side. We did the rear brake, so we had to adjust it on the on the lever and that as well. On the lever and on the little doohickey my bob. I also shot some brakes like that. Um, other than that though, everything else is fine. So this bugger should pass. So I didn't film last night, you can have some pictures instead. Because it was literally, we were on this until the milkman came. And the milkman for my neighbour comes up and Mel goes, Mel goes, good morning. <laughs> like an absolute legend. So, yeah, um, we'll see how it does stay. But fingers crossed because it's going to retro rides no matter what. Retest two, let's hope this goes fucking well. So she went for MOT and failed again, which is absolutely heartbreaking. But we went to retro rides anyway. And you can see the Rover 75 there doing a fantastic job. A vegan number plate and a Spitfire landed over the track um, and onto the runway at Goodwood, which was absolutely fantastic. Great weekend, absolutely amazing. I joined an epic club um, membership link in the description, and the 75 proved once again why it is the best car I've ever owned. And that was it for Retro Rides Weekender 2023. All right, so all that trouble we had with the handbrake was caused by that. So, it's a new brake pipe, made up by Paul, legendary, and then we're going to get these on. So this is obviously the one that goes from the, the thingy to the compensator, like that, and then you've got that one, which goes from the other side of the brake pipe to the brake flexi, that goes to the rear caliper. So we'll get that done now. It's basically all in there. You can see it there.
You can see there our split um, brake pipe and you can see there me clamping the compensator so we can adjust the brakes. She then passed her MOT. So for being a little shit, I decided to get her four new Michelin Pilot Sport tires. This, my friends, is my Fiat Coupe 20 valve. This is the car that I first bought as a project, first ever project I ever had. And I'm driving it on the road, legally. So, as you probably know, there's been a bit of a, uh, a bit of a project surrounding this for some time that I've never, ever, ever gotten around to. She sort of sat and sat and sat and been pushed to the side. But during all of that that I mentioned in the previous clip in the 75, I then decided to put her back together. It was it felt like in effect I was putting myself back together. It was really, really weird and really therapeutic. I'd start work, get to work for like eight o'clock, half past eight, something like that. I'd um I'd, you know, do my work stuff, which is obviously I'm like a senior in um in an in a, in a industry, so you know, my roles were fairly intense. Come home, get home for about five, eat my tea. It, if there's no work, the stuff that need, needed doing, just leave that. And then, um, yeah, then I would get on with this from about half past five till 11 o'clock every night. And I mean, if I just get, knock it down a few now. That noise is why I did it. <laughs> I absolutely love this car. So I um, decided to um, get her back on the road, or any means necessary. And a few friends of ours had a bet on who could get to Goodwood. And well, um, she didn't make it, because <laughs> she's shit. But, you know, she, she tried. She tried her hardest, because She's a good egg, but sadly, she didn't make it. So that's about that really, but it was an intense, intense situation, an intense project to the point where um, Phil, Mel, Phil and Mel, two friends of ours, came round and we were at it this until one o'clock in the morning. Mel actually said hello to the, good morning to the milkman. It was that incredible. It was just, it was a right trip to get this thing on the road. The long nights by myself, figuring out how to do things. I've never taken suspension off before, as you can see by the MOT history, the MOT history here. I've never done the, these sorts of front brakes before, as you can see also by the MOT history here. I've never done any of that, and I learned it all on this car, and to its detriment, because that MOT history is forever. So, um, it's just a funny thing to look back on. But I did all of it myself. And with obviously help from a few friends. Um, the welding, thank you, Paul at Lower Dog Customs. You are an absolute legend, mate. And you, um, the link to your business page is in the description because you deserve more customers. Absolute beast. Thank you for the help with the welding and just the general help in general. You're a, 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 a cool ass dude. Um, everybody else, like I've mentioned, Phil, Mel, everybody, and me as well. I you know can take a lot a decent amount of credit for this i sat here and absolutely caned it every night for about three months to get this sucker on the road and here she is finally 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 back and i am so friggin happy so i'll give you a quick tour around her and the big video on her will be released um very soon so look out for a poll on my youtube channel and you'll see if you want to see that toil and sweat um vote for it so, without further delay, let's have a quick look round. Three, two, one. Here she is. Look at her. She's back and she's better than ever. The lights still fog up. That's annoying as out. But look at it. It's incredible. It's incredible. I'll show you around it now. Let's go and have a look. So, the light fogs up. That's annoying. It has its number plate. It hasn't fallen off yet. Um, we have... Michelin Pilot Sport 3s all round, all round wheel alignment, brand new discs and pads on the front, suspension as well as new um, on the front and on the rear, new exhaust as well, which has been a friggin' mare to fit, redone all the inside, um, and then the MOT has to push the button in, that's annoying, um, but it's amazing, 
and it has these coupe mats which are also amazing the handbrake works it's had welding it's had everything i've spent too much money on it please help me <laughs> donation link in the description no i'm joking i can't believe it i am so fucking happy this thing is back on the road this is like my this is you know this is the this was the star of the show years ago when i owned a i used to own a, a business as some of you know i used to work for myself so as some of you know i was self-employed at one point i owned a business um some people this was like the star of the show so some people when they own businesses they buy lamborghinis they buy ferraris obviously i'm some dude from the north who grew up on a council estate i can't afford a ferrari or a lamborghini i can afford a fiat for 400 quid and that's what i did i bought this thing and it was a friggin state when i got it but now after a few knocks bangs scrapes and scuffs and a good pizza here and there she looks absolutely stunning and all of that hard work has really paid off it's it's such a good car it's such a beast i've just i'm just so happy with it um again this is what i've sort of toiled away at for the past couple of months so she's and the exhaust isn't saggy either the exhaust is rock solid as you can see but i am really really happy with this and i am you know i had a turbo at one point didn't really like it got rid of it this is the this is the sweet spot here an early 20 valve what a legend a midway through 20 valve such a beast favorite car ever always wanted one got it back on the road stay tuned for that video because that is coming really really soon and it's just going to be it's, it's one of them i recorded as much as i could but you know there is only so much you can record at that time of night when you're absolutely smashing it and listening to Eurobeat on full blast as well as um def leopard and other legendary things and obviously dropping some mega death in there as well so i'm extremely happy with this it's just a right belter and R paul roverman project nigel if you are watching if he's not he's dead to me joking if you want to review this let me know something late july if i'm not um doing anything else which i shouldn't be i'll make time review this sucker i'd love to see you do it because you've always mentioned fiat coupes um, and how you wanted to do a review on one so here she is for you and she's in very good condition and she won't kill you like she tried to kill me i hope but yeah that's it really for the fiat and now we'll move on to the sd1 and the vitesse which is going to be very short but quite sweet so as for the Vitesse and the SD1, there isn't an update really. Well, with the SD1, it's actually being moved to a better location. As you saw where we were, god damn, it was ridiculous. I'm not still, I think it is anyway. Well, I'll have to figure that one out. Um, but she's getting moved because we I can't sit there rolling around in the dirt anymore. <laughs> I don't think either of us can. So we, I think we're planning on moving it. I'll figure that out. But yeah that's that and then that will crack on soon it literally needs as you saw before a tire and some other stuff but we're not going to do it by halves because obviously i've done this. this is a bit of a test bed this car it always has been and always is and always probably will be if it goes if it conks out again which inevitably it will because of the badge on the steering wheel but we um we're going to redo all the brakes everything i've had new pipes on this as well i've done loads of stuff loads of stuff so yeah she's um one of them i'm afraid she's she's had a lot of stuff done to her but to my benefit and to her benefit as well so the sd1 more stuff on that's coming the vitesse is on ice for now the vitesse is a beast of a car i just don't have the money i don't have the time i just don't have the energy for it that's the flat out thing it still exists i'm still paying absorbent storage fees for it but <sighs> I want to keep it because it needs to be tret like this has been tret. If that, when that comes home to me, it will be tret like this, and being tret like this 
I mean, you've seen the results. It's had it's had absolutely loads. So that will be back eventually. And then that's really it. We do have a mystery project coming up soon, by the way, which I'll um, which you might have to guess. It's red and it has white wing mirrors, but you um, have never met it. I have talked about it though before, but and I do own that. So you'll see that in another video. And that is the end. That is the end of the restoration or whatever re-roadization of the Fiat Coupe. You can see there when I bought her for £425, she was in a very sorry state. And if you look at the engine bay, that is probably the biggest comparison. She was completely unloved at one point and used to store Viagra and a AliExpress and my first kinky sex kit. So that's a thing and that is actually true as well. It was used to drive around some private land on a farm for a while. It was then taken on as a project and then it um yeah, then it ended up in my hands once that project was given up on it was sold to like a car breaker in Bradford. So there it was and here it is at its first ever show um Wonderland 2023. There's the engine now looking fantastic with those new reproduction stickers on and there she is where she should be being shown at a car show and making her owner very, very proud. So thank you for watching. Keep watching and remember to subscribe for more of this and you'll see some more Fiat Coupe action, Ford Cortina action and action of all other kinds because we do lots of things on this channel. I'll see you all very soon.